Good morning guys, today is day five and we attempt to cross into Tibet. Today we ride to Jiron town. We've only got 37 kilometers to do, but we have been warned this will take all day getting across that Tibetan border. So the hotel we stayed at last night was very comfortable. We are in the Langtang National Park. This was established in 1976. It's Nepal's first Himalayan National Park. It contains 26 village communities. And you can see where we stopped last night was pretty, it's like shanty town here. I mean, this little place opposite is actually just a local shop selling the usual knickknacks, snacks, drinks. At the minute we're just walking up the hill towards the immigration office where we have to deliver our passports. We've got the documentation. Right in front of me here is where everybody's just getting their passports checked for the immigration office on the Nepal side. It gets a little bit more complex when we start heading up this road. That still took about an hour because the Wi-Fi kept going down. So guys, everybody is getting kitted up. Well, I think we've got everybody here. Everybody's had the passport stamped. There's a bit of a lengthy process, but we have been warned it's only gonna get worse. So I know everybody had already got their bikes prepped this morning and uh, we know we're in for a bit of a lengthy day just hanging around, waiting. Uh, the bit we've just done is the easy bit. So I think literally we've only got to kind of go up the road a little bit and uh, there's another security checkpoint. There's Alan, he's back on his feet. It wasn't advisable to, for him to continue to ride at high altitude. But here we go guys leaving the hotel and this is a this is a proper little shanty town and literally this is where we just walked up to get our uh, passport stamped i'll just show you where uh, where we went literally just here on the right this building there that's where they stamped the passports and it was really chilly this morning Look at all the little mountain goats everywhere wow I don't know if they are mountain goats, but they're kind of stood on the rocks. What's happened is, because we're a man down, you, you, you go as a team. Uh, it's so strict when you, you're crossing these borders into that China, Tibet region. The paperwork has been submitted again. And uh, they, you'd never get an idea of how long things take. And that's one of the reasons we do such a short ride. Because once we're through into the Tibet side, um, we, we just head to the hotel. Well, they're not allowed to take the trucks into Tibet, so they have to rent trucks. The bags have to be scanned, carried across the border. And I'm not sure if we have to push our bikes across the border as well. That used to be a thing, but things change all the time. And here's the, uh, the other checkpoint. So yeah, you can see the checkpoint. It's just literally made out of corrugated uh, steel. And there's a guy just with a, a pen and a paper. So yeah, I think the, uh, the authorities on this side are pretty, pretty easy going. And it literally is just like a, a dirt lane. See all these trucks that are just queuing up. We are, we are literally trying to squeeze past. <laughs> Okay, so we've got to walk across the border. So we've got to walk across the border and take the bikes. How does that work? So here we go. <laughs> right, so I basically just turned my LED light off the GoPro. So they don't know I'm recording because it is strictly forbidden. They've literally just searched all our uh, panniers, all our bags. Whoa, I mean, looks a little bit different on this side, guys. Very regimental. Look at that, on the other side of this bridge. 
the officials are very smartly dressed and this these guys here are our agents and the other guy I presume is the Tibetan agent okay we're on the move see all this stuff here is out of our support truck like I said they're not allowed to take the um, the trucks over they have to take all the luggage out that all gets scanned and searched in my bag in there there is a drone which I believe are not allowed you can see these forks here they're off uh, Alan's bike yesterday that that crashed out and you can see the the bend in them so yeah like I said all this is gonna have to get emptied out scanned so I just thought I'd uh, pop the helmet on to give you a quick update just so they uh, don't know I've, I'm recording because uh, I can't really get my phone out so the building that we went in facing in front of me you go in there and basically it's very very regimental in there uh, state-of-the-art 21st century technology uh, they've still got our passports you queue up there's a system where they take all your fingerprints all electronically done from there they just sort of go through the process of immigration and uh, yeah then we're back out all the luggage that was out here has gone in there it's gone in to be scanned uh, and we've just been told to come outside and uh, just wait so another interesting fact is the is there's a two and a quarter hour difference from that side of the bridge to here one of the other things that uh, happened in there as well they were pulling in a few of us out and going through the mobile phones going through the pictures uh, i've never seen that before any kind of immigration place i've been to right guys so we have been waiting about three hours which is considered quick we've all got to go in order oh god the bikes have gone over I don't know what happened there, but they're laughing. So yeah, guys, the rules change all the time here. Every bike is getting searched. We are getting searched. All right, it's my turn. Thank you. You got the passport, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just, uh, just in the left. Yeah. Okay. In the parking area. Sure. We are through and my bag's there so that's got to be good news that means the drone is through so everything went pretty pretty well to be fair we're just waiting for everybody else to come through um, so yeah we're in China or Tibet this is the uh, autonomous region of China so we've not got far from here I've heard that we've got more checkpoints more security checks to go through uh, like I said my bags come through so that's good because I've got my drone in there and drones are a big no-no in this part of the world we're two and a quarter hours now in front so they literally check all the bikes they check all the serial numbers the engine numbers photographs of the bike photographs of us our fingerprints it's uh, it's a pretty big process that we have to go through uh, just to cross that border but we're here and we're through so this is the official welcoming we're getting Welcome. Simon this is Tala this is a Tibetan guide he's with us for the field trip yes <laughs> Let's get on the bike and uh, we've been told we've got another couple of checkpoints to go through so guys welcome to Tibet which is the autonomous region of China so we've already handed our passports to our guide who's going to deal with this next checkpoint I'm hoping 
this one might be straightforward. Right, we're back on the bike. The funny thing is, you've got to ride on the right now. So we've changed from the left-hand side of the road to the right-hand side of the road. This will get confusing, or as the Americans will say, the correct side of the road. <laughs> So yeah, we've only done 2.6 kilometers and we've been on the go all day. And I think we might have another three or four security checks to go through. And over on the left there, we've got the Trushley River running alongside us. Oh, the other thing is speed cameras. So China, Tibet, full of speed cameras, but they don't register our bikes because these bikes are registered in India. When the trucks, the lorries, or anything that's registered on this side of the border has to comply with the speed limits, and we don't. And kind of straight away you notice how nice the roads are. <laughs> Not seen a pothole yet. I kind of don't know what to expect from the next few days, but we've been told it's certainly going to get colder. We've got some long rides coming up. And like today, this is why it's been a short ride because you can't guarantee how quick you're going to get through that immigration. The scenery around you is unbelievable. These mountain forest green views looks absolutely spectacular. You've got the waterfalls coming down the sides of the hills. It looks that picturesque. It just doesn't look real. Yeah, these mountain roads have been fantastic so far. Pretty steep hairpin style turns. A few little uh, tunnels we're going through. <laughs> and a few little rumble strips as well. Oh yeah, the views just get better as you get higher. So we've only got about 20k to go. And I'm going to love this. This is one of those parts of the world you're very unlikely to see a lot of motorcyclists. Due to the logistics, how many foreigners get the opportunity to go ride to base camp? Please pull over here and get off for registration. Another checkpoint. So that was pretty straightforward, but yeah, very quick. That literally just took uh, a couple of minutes. They just wanted to check the passports. Oh, right hand side of the road. Right, so we are back on the bike once again. We'll see how many more stops we've got to do in the short distance to get to our destination. So I'm not sure if I pronounced the destination right of uh, Girong. I heard somebody earlier call it Keelong and then I think the Chinese call it something else like Lilong. Anyway, that's where we're heading. So there's a few cows knocking around. They don't look like wild ones. They've got a rope and a bell around the neck. And I have not seen a pothole yet. Just getting a nice cool breeze as we're heading through the trees. But yeah, this is great riding guys. Sweeping through the mountains. Speed cameras above my head. I'm not actually sure what the speed limit should be. And I think today we're gonna get up to something like 3,000 meters. And as we progress over the next few days, we're gonna start gaining some altitude. So I've ridden at high altitudes before in the Indian Himalayas and we've been told to prepare every day. We've been taking the uh, altitude sickness tablets to get our bodies used to it. Uh, the staff, the crew here take it, even local people take it because they say the air is a lot different. When people suffer with altitude sickness, a lot worse in these parts than when in India. Whoa! Now you don't want to be hitting one of them. Oh, oh, oh. They're big. And I bet they're tasty. We've all just pulled up. 
guess because we're uh, we're turning left. I mean, this looks a nice place. Look at the brickwork. Beautiful stone buildings. Our hotel, I think. Whoa, <laughs> look where we're going down here. Oh. Oh, hold on. There's no reverse gear on these things. Yeah. <laughs> the guys have just gone down the basement and I think the car park's around the back. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are going to argue it out. They don't know what. He's saying five o'clock. You're saying four o'clock. I make I make it four o'clock. Oh, okay. So uh, Alex just said these uh, two Girongs. This is Girong Town. You got to be careful. You don't go to the wrong one. He says. So yeah, maybe you can uh, agree on the time at the minute. So uh, yeah, we are staying here then, guys. This is our place of rest. Looks very nice. So here we get to experience new culture, new people, and new food. So guys, this is where we're staying tonight. Today was a short ride, but a long day. Getting through them border crossings was quite complex, and logistically, the team has got us through. Just a short ride the other side, the roads are absolutely superb. The weather's been good today, and the hotel we are stopping at is very, very nice. So I hope you enjoyed the video today guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so, give us a like and I'll see you in the next one. It just looks amazing. He's absolutely flying on that end field. There's literally nobody about. Wow, look at this lot. There's hundreds of them. 15 and a half thousand feet has gone down with altitude sickness. Look at that, what a view.